Oh yeah, that's good. Nice and hot, under five minutes to cook a can of soup. You can't go wrong. Hey everybody, this is Matt with Take Roads Less Traveled, and today we are reviewing Coleman's Classic Camp Stove. This has been a staple for many campers for years. Uh, I've owned this one for a little over eight years personally, and it has never failed to provide me with good hot food. And a lot of people wonder, well, if you're going camping, why don't you just use a campfire to cook your food? Or why don't you just have hot food or go out to eat or whatever? And one of the aspects of overlanding is the fact that you're completely vehicle based. So you want to have as much in your vehicle as you can to go about normal life. And being able to cook hot food is one of those things. And there's a lot of different options out there for being able to cook your food. You can do it over a fire if you want. You can do it with one of the ultralight small stoves. And you can do it with a normal stove. You can have a full grill set up if you wanted. And all have their pros, all have their cons, all have their place as far as where, where you're going to use them with what you're doing. But for me, this is the go-to. Uh, as you can see, uh, I mean, it, it works pretty well. I've got a 12 inch pan and then a small eight inch pan on here and you're able to cook your food up really well. Uh, I finished a trip a few weeks ago and I did steak, uh, pan fried steak, uh, or pan seared steak and, and it was great. You know, we had that, we had some summer veggies and a little bit of rice that we used, uh, one of the ultralight stoves to cook the rice with. But for our main food, the steak and the veggies, this did an excellent job of cooking them. And I just want to go over it. And like any product, there's good things about it and there's also bad things about it. And I just want to hit those and help you make the best decision for what you want and what you're going to need, especially if you're on a budget and you're wanting to go camp and you're wanting to do overlanding, those types of things. So first and foremost, when it comes to this stove, is the price you can get these for fifty dollars or less i've seen them as low as thirty dollars at certain stores you can get them on coleman's website you can get them on amazon and if you're if you're spending more than fifty dollars on their classic stove you're spending way too much you should be able to get it for well under fifty dollars uh, even after shipping and everything and that alone is a great bargain so number two is that you have to look at the fact that what does it use to cook? And in this case, it uses just simple propane. Uh, these little green bottles you can find anywhere and everywhere. And whether it's at a big box store, whether it's in a national forest at a campground in their little camp store, anything like that, you can go to nearly anywhere and find these. And they're relatively cheap. Uh, I think you can get a two pack for $7. And so having that propane is really nice. It gives a good clean burn and it heats all of your food up really, really well. So again, not only is your stove itself inexpensive, but even the fuel to burn is inexpensive as well. With that, it's perfect for vehicle-based camping, whether that be overlanding or just a weekend trip to a campsite, anything like that. Uh, you can see I've got it set up on the tailgate of my truck and it works great. It's already there. The pans aren't going to slide all over the place or anything like that. It packs up really well. These uh, The wind guards fold into the lid. whole thing comes down and locks all in place. Uh, the burner tube, uh, the regulator for the fuel, all packs inside of it. And it's really simple. It, and it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's approximately 21 inches long, 13 inches deep, and about 4 inches tall when it's completely packed up so it doesn't eat up a lot of space you can just slide it right in between luggage or anything like that and it makes it real easy to to transport um, Coleman says it's light but that's relative it weighs about 10 to 12 pounds uh, give or take depending on what your scale is I, I see it more around the 12 pounds so you're not going to want to use this if you're hiking this is going to be way too heavy if you're going to be hiking or if you're not able to park nearby your campsite. You you want it to be in easy distance because you're not going to want to have to lug this around. 
Uh, however, that being the case, it does have a really nice built-in handle uh, right here for you to carry it with. So it is easy to carry around, but again, you're not just you're just not going to want to have it for long distance hikes or anything like that. So uh, that that is one aspect. But again, it's it's great for vehicle based camping or even if you're just going to be setting up a tent at a campground, something like that. It's it's great to have there. So those are those are just a few things to consider with it. With that, you also have to look at the fact that because it's a propane, which isn't a good clean burn. One of the biggest benefits to this is that it actually doesn't use a lot of fuel to burn. Some stoves go through your fuel, you end up going through your fuel really quickly. And with this, I've had, I've had this bottle for quite some time actually. And I've used it on probably the last three or four trips I've been on uh, for cooking. And generally with both burners going on a real high heat, one of these small green bottles is still going to last you an hour or more. Like I said, I've had this one bottle for quite some time already. My last three or four trips that I've used this stove on, all of them with, I've been able to use the exact same bottle and it still has plenty of fuel left in it. So that's another aspect. So one of the things that I love about this stove is that it does have wind guards. Um, when, when you're cooking and you're out camping and it's starting you get some wind blowing through or anything like that whether it's on your fire or something like that is it, it can make it hard to have have consistent heat and these wind guards which are adjustable you just have a little tab that you can move it in and out and everything it they work really well to block the heat for the most part uh, but with that too is you have the aspect of good hot food in a short amount of time so being able to cook over an open flame, having a campfire to cook your steak over all of that is great. You get really good flavor, that nice smokiness from the wood built in with the meat as well when you bite into it. And that makes a really good meal, but that can take some time. And if you're doing cold weather camping or if it's just cool or if it's been a little damp out or anything like that, you generally don't want to have to sit and wait for that fire to get hot enough to be able to cook your food you want something that you can just really get into and this provides really fast good hot food like i said i did i did pan steaks and veggies and in under 10 minutes we had food and it's simply because of how quickly this heats up and gets good hot food out to you you really can't put a price on that when you're out in the mountains and you're sitting you've had a long day and you're like okay i need a good hot meal what can i have one of the other aspects that i've personally found is outside of cooking just heating up water not even to boiling it which it does boil water very quickly but i can heat up a pot of water and use that warm water in five minutes or less pour that into my helio shower and then i've got a nice hot shower that i can use so it's it makes it really nice if you're out somewhere and you don't have a bathhouse that you're able to get cleaned up in but you've been out on the trails you're sweaty you're dirty you just feel like getting cleaned up a little bit it makes it real nice to have a good hot water source there so those are the, those are the pros and like i said any product does have cons and one of the cons is that uh from from the factory straight out of the box is the heat control uh, these typically have about three settings off hot and really hot so it's it's real finicky yeah you've got knobs that control both burners but as soon as you turn it on you're getting a pretty good flame coming off that burner and you have to look at that and it's it's something that with practice you can fine-tune a little bit uh, obviously weather conditions are going to play a role the temperature the wind but once you get some practice on it you can get a low heat setting but it's really difficult to maintain it's one of those aspects where if you're just wanting to simmer something you're going to have a hard time doing that and part of that is because it's an entry level stove it's their base stove so you're not going to have all the aspects of it that you would like i've heard some people are modifying their burners uh the burner control valves to to allow for a simmer but straight out of the box you're going to have a hard time with low heat and that's something to be aware of with that you do have a limit on your pan size like i said i've got a 12 inch and an 8 inch on here and i've got the guards pretty well closed in and there's not much room there 
Coleman says that you can do a 12 inch and a 10 inch, but you'd have to have your guards pretty well open in order to be able to do that. Um, not only that, but if you get a larger pan size, you start making it to where they're hanging off the front end and they're going to get wobbly. If you want it to sit back and have that burner centered underneath the pan, you can't go too large of a pan size on both burners. So it's something to be aware of. Uh, the other aspect of that is how you light it. So some stoves are going to have an auto lighter. They're going to have a little sparker that you can use. With this, uh, you get the burner going and then you have to manually light it. So what you're going to have to do is get her going and then you have to get your hand fairly close to that burner when you light it if you're using a traditional match or a traditional big lighter style form to, to get her going. What I found is the, the extended stick lighters that Bic has, those little clicker ones, work really well. That way you're not singeing your hand or anything like that. And then lastly is the wind guards. And like I said, they're effective most of the time, but if you got high wind, it's they're not going to do as much as you want it to do to, to negate that wind coming in and affecting your burn and your heat. But again, this is an entry-level stove. It's one that... If you're, if you're on a budget, it works phenomenally well. Like I said, I've owned this for eight years. I've had no reason to upgrade to one of Coleman's higher tier stoves because it works. It's tried and true. And bottom line is the few cons that it has do nothing to dissuade me from recommending this stove to you. This is a great entry level one. Like I said, it's one where hot, quick food is there in very little time for you when you're out camping. So check it out. You'll see links in the description below for where you can purchase it. And hope you guys have a great day. And remember, always take the roads less traveled.